Yeah, like like I just said, it's been actually probably about two months since the last time we did one of these, so there's been a lot of moving parts, uh, really from the last game of the season, which ended on really December 1st on. Um, you know, it's been two months to to do have a lot of different moving parts. You know, you, you look at uh, a lot of the changes that have happened from new coaches to really a new team when you look out there. Um, <clears throat> when you lose 22 seniors, you got to replace a lot of different people in. Uh, but there's a lot of optimism about this. And um, really what happened, like, you know, you go through a year of the Sun Belt and uh, you, in your first year at Texas State, there's a lot of different moving parts. You know, you're trying to figure out every little nuance, every little facet that touches your program on how it works, how the recruiting works, your numbers, uh, your, your just your current personnel and what you have and the needs that uh, you believe are are needed to be successful in this conference. And it was it was a really good learning experience for all of us. And what I like to see is that we've had a ton of conversations in the really in the month of December and in November and kind of, you know, in late October leading into what we needed to address in recruiting. And you get to December, uh, we hit it running. Like we came back from the Coastal Carolina game and we went straight out on the road and tried to hit as many, um, as many immediate needs as possible. Because like I said, when you had 22 seniors that, you're le that is leaving your program, uh, you have to replace as many bodies as you possibly can so you can actually probably have a clean spring practice. So we had a ton of, of dialogue as a coaching staff and, and uh, got this kind of going in the direction where we went, where we have 11 guys that are currently here now that we signed in December that are currently going through this spring semester, which will piece together a little bit better spring practice for us where we can get our hands on these guys and develop them right now. So that was a huge uh, importance for us, and we got that thing going in, in the best capacity as possible. Um, but what we wanted to do is, is we wanted to change the profile of our team. Like I said, when you go through a year, uh, first time in the Sun Belt, first time with these current players on what we have, what are our needs? And we thought as a staff, we wanted to be a bigger, longer, more athletic team. All right? We have some talented kids, uh, don't get me wrong, but you know we have a lot of small body types out there. And uh, uh, we've always been a big believer, and we, I've learned this for a long time, that big people beat up little people. All right? This is football, and this is how it is. So we tried to get the biggest body types that we possibly could. And uh, I think we've done a good job at that. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, you look at where we were at with the coaching staff, you know, 40% of our staff will be new. All right? And I thought we did a great job with the communication on trying to find these guys when we knew that we were going to have changes at, at the coaching staff. And uh, it allowed me to bring in uh, five coaches, you know, three of them that are currently here that I'll discuss right now. And I got two more that were going through contract negotiations that I can't release publicly until that goes through. But uh, got to hire a strength coach uh, named Damon Harrington. He was the head strength coach, which is kind of funny. These three guys that I'm about to talk about all were with me at the University of Cal. Um, so it's kind of like we're bringing the band back together in a way. Um, <clears throat> but Coach Harrington was our, our strength coach at Cal, the head strength coach. Uh, he's an elite guy. He has one of these unique abilities to be very demanding, uh, emphasize a toughness and accountability and a discipline in our players in the program and still have that quality trait where these kids will run through a wall for them. And uh, that's, that's been the funnest part to see with uh, Coach Harrington because my year at, uh, in 2016 at Cal was a memorable year because we did so much more with less and those kids played extremely hard and it all started with the strength and conditioning coach. So I, I ended up going with uh, Jacob Peeler as our offensive coordinator and our receiver coach who uh, was with me at Cal as well, where we were the number seven offense in the country. Uh, he is considered one of the top receiver coaches in the country. Uh, came from Ole Miss. Um, I was the co-offensive coordinator receiver coach there. Uh, he has been ranked as a top 10 recruiter um, in the country as well by multiple recruiting sites. Uh, it, the thing that was, was great for me was um, uh, he knows exactly how I think. It's been the easiest transition I've ever had with a coach. We're on the same level. We don't have to sit down and do installations as much as possible. He knows how to recruit. And uh, we'll talk about some of these recruits that he in impacted uh, pretty heavily uh, for this recruiting class. So I'm um, fortunate to have him, uh, you know, consider him a good friend. Um, you know, and, and obviously he's a really good coach. Um, brought in Brian Hamilton, who is our new tight ends coach. He was at the University of Cal as well with me. He was our assistant O-line coach. 
um, did everything. He, he's a great person, a great family man, a great recruiter. He was a, a high school head coach in the state of California. He was our assistant O-line coach. He did all of our screen game, a really good recruiter. He was currently at Murray State in Murray, Kentucky as the assistant head coach and the, and the offensive line coach there. Um, but what's great is, is I, I'm bringing guys in that I'm really familiar with, that I know everything about. Um, they know how I think. They know how I work, uh, which makes it a lot more easy and comforting for me, especially if I'm going to call plays next year. Um, so excited for those three guys to be here um, and had the fortunate, to get, uh, fortunate enough to get them here now and be able to get through some recruiting with these guys. All right? and, and obviously talking about Coach Peeler, who's one of the better recruiters out there in the country, uh, he – we got to sit down, address some needs. We wanted to get some length at the receiver position. And you're going to see that he brought in four receivers that are pretty long and uh, athletic and a, a different body type than what we're used to. But there was also, with all these changes with the coaches and the dialogue in January, uh, you can't discuss these right now, but we have a lot of preferred walk-ons that are committed to us right now that I thought this coaching staff has done a pretty good job at making sure we're all on the same page. And, and filling needs and body numbers because we never filled the roster last year. We never hit, oh, like you can have 120 kids on our roster and we never really got over 110 guys throughout the course of the year. So uh, we're going to be at max capacity moving forward, which you know is all about addressing needs, which was depth, experience, and body types. And I, I think that we, we ended up doing that. And you talk about the signing class currently, uh, we have 20 newcomers that we've got right now. And uh, seven of these guys are high school signees and 13 of them are transfers, and or junior college transfers or uh, four-year college transfers. So that has to go with a lot of the mid-year stuff that we needed. All right, so we got a lot of these kids to transfer in mid-year. We have 11 of these guys currently here on campus that uh, are out there working and doing the installs and, and working towards our next class, which is comforting for me because that's when you say you look in uh, the team meeting that we've had, it's a brand new team. You see 11 new faces and you see 40% of your coaches that are new in, uh, uh, in the room. So um, 13 of these kids that were, that were signing today um, and what we signed in December are high school kids in the state of Texas. So that was uh, still important. So we still had to go and, and, and kind of clip some guys off of different states. But majority of these kids are coming back to play in their home state. Um, I thought this was kind of an interesting deal. Uh, with our O-line height and weight, with the guys that we were bringing in. All right, our average height and weight is six foot four and a half, 292 pounds at the offensive line position. So we are getting bigger at that spot. And that's why you've heard me talk about the body types, the profile, that's what we are looking for. So six foot four and a half of the five offense linemen that we're bringing in that are at 292 pounds. The average receiver height with the four that we're bringing in is six foot two, 200 pounds is the weight. So you can see that we're increasing the length of profile. You should see a bigger uh, profile team just at first glance when you see this team. And you look at the DBs that we brought in with three that we brought in, they're six foot one, 187 pounds is the, the average of those three right there. But we'll start with the defense. Um, ended up bringing in nine defensive guys. Uh, nine defensive guys, and we'll start with the D-line, okay? I'm going to go quick through it because of this, the 20, but I'd like to just say a few things about each one of these kids uh, and what they can bring to the table and a little bit about them. So you guys, when you do your research on them, you know a little bit more about them. But uh, we're starting with the D-line. We have Derek Ray Jr., who signed today with us. Uh, he uh, is from Trinity Valley High School. He's from Rosenberg. Um, uh, Rosenberg Terry uh, was the high school that he went to in Richmond, Texas. So um, he is a Texas kid. Um, an athletic D-line. He can play D-N. He can play three technique. He's very disruptive at all that stuff, uh, where you can play him at multiple positions. Right? Um, we need a guy to replace Ish Davis. He's going to be a guy that comes in. He's going to compete for that spot. And he's going to bring a, a pass rushing technique also with uh, being able to be disruptive in a three technique position. Uh, we have Maurice Wren coming in. Um, he played at Mesquite Horn. He is from Tyler Junior College. Uh, this is an athletic, long, pass rushing guy. All right, to put it into perspective, he signed as a receiver to La Tech out of high school. So he, he is an athletic kid that has just grown up and, to, and hit a growth spurt. And he's around 250 pounds and about six foot four right now. So he's going to be a dynamic, athletic guy that we will play in that boundary where he can rush the passer and also drop off in the coverage if needed. Uh, but a long body type. Uh, getting into the linebackers. Uh, we'll start with Isaiah Kareem. He's from Mississippi Delta Community College. 
Um, he was a late get for us. You know, we, we've talked about it before in this room about all the linebackers that we've lost and the production that we lost, and we had an opportunity to bring in a ton of linebackers, right? But you can't bring in just a ton of freshmen linebackers to fill the void. So we went through a few of these, um, these transfers as well. But Isaiah is, uh, he will strike you. He is a guy that is a very physical presence that will, will contribute uh, on the defensive side, but also in the special team side as well. And we did a lot of conversations about how these guys are going to uh, contribute in uh, other capacities. But he brings experience to the table. Uh, you get to uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is Isaiah Nixon, who uh, he uh, was our first guy committed to us. All right, uh, he's from Fort Bend Elkins, a freshman out of uh, out of Houston, Texas. Uh, very talented kids in terms of he plays multiple positions. All right, we have him as an inside linebacker body type right now, but he is, he played running back, rushed for 800 yards last year, so the kid can play both of them. Um, you know, with me calling the plays now, and Coach McDaniel's got him as a inside linebacker. Now we'll have the discussions about getting him over to the offensive side of the ball and see how Coach McDaniel's will appreciate that. But uh, it, uh, uh, happy to get this kid here. A great kid. Just uh, he's been solid with us from the get go. He was the first guy with us, so I'm very extremely excited about him. Uh, you get to the the Manuel twins, Josh and John Emanuel. Right, they were the ones that committed right after Isaiah. All right, Isaiah got these two to kind of jump in the boat. They're two talented kids in terms of uh, they play very well together. Right. They play ball. They communicate. It's fun to watch these two play because they play football. They bend. They do everything together side by side really their entire life. Coach McDaniel's done a great job with these guys on getting them here uh, and, and recruiting them. Um, you know, they, they're going to play all different spots. We have four line, linebacker positions. They can play them all. They're very multiple with that, and you can move them in and out. And what you do with these freshman type bodies where you know that they can at least play one if they end up keep getting bigger and bigger and then and eventually they may end up only playing two, but right now they can play all four of them. It's going to be fun to watch them move around. Uh, you get on to the defensive backs. Um, we'll start with uh, the three DBs. Coach Dewhurst has done a really good job with this. Uh, if you give Coach Dewhurst a number, he's going to go get a pretty quality player with this. So, uh, uh, And if you don't, he always has two or three left in the chamber for him um, just to – in case that if uh, Connor Anderson, our director of player personnel, gives him another number, he'll have a guy ready for it immediately. But we're going to start with Tory Spears, who uh, is a transfer from Iowa State. Uh, he got great genetics. His dad, Marcus Spears, played 10 years in the NFL at offensive tackle. Um, you know, he uh, he's from uh, Cy Woods. He's a Houston kid. Um, you know, very long, athletic. He's six foot three, two hundred pounds, um, with experience in the Big Twelve. Uh, love his energy. Just love how he approaches the game. And excited that you know, that he's here. That was kind of one of those transfer portal late additions. Uh, hopped in about seventy-two hours before signing day, and we end up getting him. Uh, look at the next one is Grid Isidore. Uh, he is from Slidell, Louisiana, from Tyler Junior College. Um, very aggressive, large DB. He will hit you. He's very physical. He's six foot one, 180 pounds. He does not shy away from contact. And uh, I think with you talk about those two right there, those guys, they've got experience. They've played college football. They know the physical traits of playing defensive back, and they're going to bring an edge that we need in that back end. Um, the last one is Zion Childress, who um, we signed today. We've been recruiting this kid for a long time. We had this kid at Party in the Park with the Twins and, and Isaiah Nixon. Um, the thing that's made it hard with him with recruiting is he plays every single position on the field. He's, the, he's been a quarterback, is the one that he normally plays from New Caney. Um, you know, he's a three sports star. He runs track, he plays basketball, he does football. And, and Coach Dewhurst does a really good job at identifying, you know, quarterbacks and moving them to DBs. And, uh, you know, the kid can do it all. So you, you always take kids like that where, you know, Coach Dewhurst is really adamant about him at the, the defensive back position, but that kid's capable of doing anything for us. But we're going to start him off there at DB. Uh, going on to the offensive side. Offensive side uh, is really a new face. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, transfers that we got here are offensive players. So I'll start with uh, the running back room. We have Jamil Jeter. Uh, he was originally from San Antonio Brennan High School. He just transferred in from Oklahoma State. Uh, he is a big physical back. Um, probably one of the more physical kids we got on our team currently right now. Um, so he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, you know, it, it goes down to this transfer portal. 
when a kid like that wants to come to Texas State, you can't say no to it just because when he walks through the door, he looks the part and, and you understand where he's from. And no brainer for us when it, especially he's right down the road at San Antonio Brennan. Uh, bringing in Brock Sturgis next, who played his high school ball at Allen High School and signed to Arizona State out of high school. Uh, ended up being at Butler Community College last year. He rushed for a little over 1,000 yards um, and was a first team All American uh, in the junior college ranks at Butler. Uh, kid's got a, a contagious personality about him. Um, everybody, like the thing I knew about him when I, that kind of solidified it for me is you watch him in junior college practice, every single person on the field loved him. They always dapped him up. They were always just running around him. So uh, I, I like that about him. I like his energy. I'm glad this kid came to Texas State and chose uh, to come back home. Um, all right, going into the receivers, um, kind of mentioned this about Jacob Peeler and the, uh, what he has brought here. He, we're bringing in four receivers right now that all have a ton of length and are big. And he's already had previous relationships with in terms of recruiting. And uh, you go to Marcel Barbie, who is the first one we brought in from Iowa Western. Uh, and this is this is kind of a later, a kind of unique get. Peeler comes here, he he signs on, and then he ends up finding this kid that he'd had conversations with. Um, he this kid has some connections with Micah Hiltz. I grew up playing ball with him, um, and uh, you know he was at Iowa Western. Is really he's from Colorado, obviously. If you if you grew up with Micah, but. Uh, uh, had over 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns in his junior college career. Very long, athletic. He's a guy that played inside receiver at, in junior college, but he can play in both. We're going to start him outside um, just to add some more length, obviously, out there and make that uh, a competitive uh, room. Um, you go to Drew Jackson, who um, was from Saxe High School, um, currently was at Tyler Junior College. He signed to Washington State out of, uh, out of high school, chose to go to Tyler Junior College to get back in the state of Texas. and. Uh, uh, got on him pretty early, and uh, Peeler kind of sealed the deal with this guy. Um, very athletic as well. Hey, there's potential of him being on the high jumping team. He's probably going to be on our track team. He's going to try out and uh, maybe help us out in the track and field um, kind of aspect of it all. But uh, that shows you that he has some athletic ability uh, just by his high jumping and triple jumping ability. Um, but again, he's a guy that played outside at at junior college, he played inside at Washington State. Can do them both. We're going to start him inside for now, um, just uh, to add at least some more length inside. All right, one that came up uh, kind of kind of late for us, and this uh, all deals with Jacob Peeler as well. Uh, we have Jacob Horn, who's from Tupelo, Mississippi. Who dad is? Uh, there's a lot of genetics in this one as well. His dad is is Joe Horn, um, the New Orleans Saints. Um, I call it the legendary receiver, just because we all know with the cell phone and everything. He, he uh, uh, you know, I used to love watching him play. Um, but it's his son. He, uh, uh, it was a, it was a late gift for us. So, you know, Peeler ended up getting him committed up uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, glad he's here. He's a big slot. He he's a good looking kid when he walks in. He's going to be fun to play with. Uh, at, in terms of where he can do anything that like he'll be able to play all sorts of positions, but he is a big, talented kid. Um, he was committed to, to Coach Peeler at Ole Miss for probably about a year, and uh, ends up uh, signing with us, which is a which is a solid gift for us. Uh, Kevin Howard is one um, who ended up walking on for us, but we want to talk about him. Uh, he is a uh, a Fort Scott Community College receiver. He's probably not in there for the signing day, but. Wanted to mention him because he's transferred in and he is here. He's walked on. Uh, very talented kid. Um, was initially committed to Arkansas State early and uh, had a relationship with Peeler through uh, his time at Ole Miss and just kind of recruiting him when Peeler got here. And we were looking for walk-on bodies and and uh, just kind of help with our numbers. You know, Peeler got him here, and, and this kid's impressive so far that he's been here. So I got really fired up for that kid. Uh, Let's get on to the offensive line. So we got five offensive linemen. Um, we got Silas Robinson we'll start with. He is a transfer from Arkansas. His dad's the head coach at Yoakum High School. He played at Yoakum. Uh, so he's back in the state of Texas. Um, the kid's got a great work ethic. He was a quarterback early in his career and then got so big he turned into a right guard. Now he's a tackle. You know, he's just a he's a big, good looking kid, uh, coach's kid. And, um, you know, you, I haven't been 
you know, in the office as much because we've been out recruiting. But in the time that you are, you look out in the middle of the field like at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, he's out there just working O-line technique by himself in the middle of the field. You know, he just you can tell that he cares about the game. So uh, excited for him as well. Next one is Russell Baker uh, from Northeastern uh, Oklahoma, NEO. Um, went to Owasso High School, which uh, the head coach of Owasso was the guy I played for in high school. Um, so far, the strength and conditioning staff is raving about this kid. Um, he's a pretty big, good-looking kid. Um, and the thing that I wanted to really emphasize about him is he is physical. It, you watch his tape. He likes to hit people. You can tell he enjoys playing the game. And uh, he, he definitely is going to add some size and some, some edge to us up front. You get to Trent Scott, who uh, is, hasn't played football that long. And he is pretty impressive. You know, he's... He's gonna. There's a huge upside with this kid. He's six foot five right now, 270 pounds. He plays football, basketball, and baseball. He, he scores 13 points a game, um, 10 rebounds a game. He's uh, he's literally got a tremendous amount of upside, and he's he's a pretty good looking kid when you walk in. And he's gonna be a kid that we're gonna throw into the fire, and we'll develop him, and he's gonna be a solid player for us. Get to Austin Markowitz. He uh, is from McKinney North in Dallas. Um, Coach McGuire's been on him for a long, long time. And I think the relationship with Coach McGuire and what he's done is has gotten Austin to come here. Um, he, he can play all five positions. He can be at center all the way through guard and tackle. And that's what's going to make him a valuable kid for us. Um, because if when you get into those injuries like we did last year, you're going to be able to plug kids like this in any position. So, um, But again, Coach uh, McGuire did a great job with him. And, and, and I'm excited for him and his future. Uh, you get Alex Castilla. Um, Alex Castilla is from Tyler Junior College. He went to San Marcos High School, so he's a rattler. Um, he's coming in town uh, uh, here in May. He'll be here. Um, he brings a, a nastiness and an edge to him. We convinced him to stay home. He had a lot of good offers out there, but just the whole uh, proximity of staying home and playing for us and being a part of what we're trying to build was a, a good selling point for him. But uh, you watch his tape, he's got some edge to him, which, uh, is, as as you guys can see, we were bringing in a lot of different bodies right now. And uh, I wanted to talk one more about Brady McBride. So we did not sign a quarterback in this class. He is considered the quarterback for our class. Um, you know, just from that transfer portal and how that opportunity came up after, um, you know, fall camp and at the end of August, it was a great opportunity for us to bring him in with an experienced Memphis transfer, played at Capel. Uh, his dad's the head coach of McKinney Boyd, he's a coach's kid, whole thing. Uh, you know, we've already talked a little bit about Brady, but we're excited for him. But he is the quarterback spot. Um, yeah, so a as you can see, there's there is a lot of people that we just went through. I knew this was going to be a longer kind of press conference to go with it, which is a lot more than really like the eight guys that we signed last year. Um, so as you lose 22 seniors, you got a lot of moving parts. We wanted to change the profile, and that's why we brought in a lot of experienced guys. And, and uh, I, I think we've added a lot of depth to this program, a lot of healthy competitions. And uh, I think that's going to be great for us. There, you got to thank all the coaches for what they've done and how we've communicated through all this. Um, I think they've done a, an unbelievable job with that. But uh, what a lot of the people don't see is like our director of player personnel, Connor Anderson, and James Sherman, who our, our director of player development is, and Haley Blocker, who's our director of football operations, and Jake McCauley, who does all the videos that you guys see on Twitter, and you know, and then Andrew Johnson, our equipment manager, who tries to get these kids all swagged out and and make it a good experience for them, and make sure that we're going through the proper channels because this is the largest mid-year. Uh, group of guys that have ever happened at this school and it doesn't just start like I is the coaches do a great job at evaluating it and getting them here but the support staff is really what makes this thing go and uh, they've done a great job of getting them in school and getting them what they need but it also goes down to the administration on the people that work hand in hand with football through those little things with Kelsey Solis and compliance who is helping get these kids eligible and get them in and Lori Heinsohn and academics and Tracy Shoemake on, on getting the scholarship money and everything in line and, and working with uh, the admissions requirements. So it's what I'm pleased with right now is year two is always better than year one because I know how it works and I know who to talk to. And now the alignment's getting in the direction that it wants to. And, 
And uh, you got to thank everybody that touches this program, especially from those things that you don't really talk about from admissions and, and player development and equipment and video. Uh, they all played an integral part on getting these guys. So, again, excited for it. Uh, now we got to get to work. You know, I'm excited to be back in, in town, yeah, excited to get with these kids and start coaching football and, and moving into spring and uh, seeing what these kids are capable of doing. And, you know, right now we've got the spring game set for April 11th and uh, the maroon gold game. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably talk a lot more throughout the course of time. So I want to open up for questions now after that long rant. <laughs> Tori, Tori Spears is immediate eligible, and then the waiver will be with uh, Jamil and uh, Silas. Those are the only two that have to go through the waiver process out of everybody. Yeah, every, everyone's different. <laughs> you know, uh, that's that's something like what I was kind of talking about with the support staff. I know Connor Anderson has been, you know, gathering up as much as information and Kelsey Solis, our compliance officer, to just make sure that we have a, a, a case to put forward, you know, and what we think is a strong case, you know, just on the on the issues of why they've came back. Well, yeah, that's uh, this is where I, I talk about giving credit to the coaching staff because you know, you're only allotted so many numbers. And bringing Brady in, and you also have, you know, Jalen Gibson and Tyler Vitt and Cedric Case um, on, on scholarship in the quarterback room. And to bring in another one, you get a fifth one in. And where we're at, we needed more needs at, like, the O-line spots and to gather more depths. You know, we play the Coastal Carolina game. And we're – and you guys still haven't noticed it, but we had our tight ends playing tackles in the warm-ups because we didn't have enough O-line bodies. You know, so like we, we just kind of pieced it together because of the depth. And we felt that we needed to bring in offensive linemen. So we brought in five. And then we're, we're bringing in a ton of walk-ons. And, you know, we're trying to get some more body types as well, which we still have two to – and you can talk about blue shirt opportunities and all this, but we have about four scholarships available for certain needs just in case for this rest of the summer because this transfer portal has been pretty good to us, we believe. Yeah, I, I can't talk about that one. That's the that's the one, but that'd be probably be better off to reach out to him. You know, yeah. Yeah, it uh, it, it was kind of funny. Like I've known Peeler obviously since 2016, and been really close with him. Um, I always joke with him about, you know, where he was at and coming to be the OC and eventually we, it would happen. And, uh, um, you know, we made the changes offensively and Peeler was in the hospital while his wife was about to give birth to their first kid and Lane Kiffin called and fired him and then called me and then really took the job. <laughs> you know, like I offered them a job after it. So it was like the craziest chain of events I ever happened. And uh, Peeler's one of those guys that well, he was out of a job and then we were kind of negotiating stuff where he just sat there and didn't have a place to go into the office or talk football. So he just sat there and recruited and looked through so many different things and went through databases that he had and, and uh, kind of had dialogue with me on what type of receivers we had and body sizes and needs and kind of just knew how I think. And I said, go find some long athletic receivers. And he brings back four of them, <laughs> you know. And uh, and he gets, you know, uh, Kevin Howard to walk on. And, you know, I think he's kind of changed, had an impact and changed that room already just based off of having a little bit of time to, to get some guys in mid-year, but also sign some good ones uh, and sign Jacob here in the – in the second recruiting uh, signing class, so signing day. So he, he's, he's had his impact already. Uh, 
Uh, it, it's that it's a good question. You know, you, you see his tape, and he's playing outside, he's playing tight end, he's playing slot receiver. Like right now, like we're gonna put him in where we see the need because he's he's a great kid so far that I've met, and he'll he'll do whatever we tell him to do. But I think we're gonna move him inside because I think he's a big body type that you could eventually maybe see him do some stuff in the backfield as long as being split out. No, like we, surprising enough, like at West Virginia, we do a lot of that too. You know, it, we just it would do, we did about half classes, you know, and a lot of that had to do with we could uh, we at least develop the depth, and you you got to bring in a fair amount of developmental kids to keep con building a program, and also bring in guys to fix immediate needs. Where at West Virginia, we got it where we could we transferred in a lot early, and then it kind of like sorted itself out where you can bring in just a probably about we would bring in about five to eight a year and then bring the rest in as high school kids and we've had discussions over the years about sometimes if you got to flip it and you're low on numbers you got to just bring in as many guys as you possibly can and really what happened was is word gets out and then more people want to be a part of it and they see that they're bringing these type of players and they start talking and then you get put in a situation where you really can't say no to a kid that if he really wants to come to SMU or Texas State, you know, I'm not going to say no to it. You know, like it's like Tory Spears. He's a six foot four, 205 pound DB that played at Iowa State. Says he wants to come to Texas State. You know, already had previous relationships with him and all that. And just all right, let's go. You can't say no to that. So then your numbers kind of tweak a little bit different. You know, we were really going to bring in two DBs. Now we brought in three. So it's just kind of one of those those deals that happen. So. Uh, it, it's a unique deal. The, this transfer portal is a pretty hot topic. I think it's uh, affecting high school kids in a way because, you know, you bring in, you know, all these transfers right now that could possibly go to a kid that could be here at Texas State. Yeah, I think he weighed in like 247 or something like that when I was looking at it today. Um, yeah, the, it's, the weights are always – like you'll be surprised. Like uh, we've had – I've had tight ends put on – like Micah Hill's put on 25 pounds in like two weeks, you know, when he first got here. A lot has to do with nutrition and, you know, just where they're at in their life, you know, the maturity level of it all. Of it all. But, um, yeah, Maurice is – obviously he was a t uh, receiver, you know, and then – comes to junior college and you look at those long body types that can move you know that's why a lot of people wanted them and it was kind of one of those deals where we had all these Tyler junior college kids and and Brock Sturgis who knows everybody and Brady knows everybody that just kind of domino effect and he hopped in too so it was a good get. Say that again. Which one? Like, oh, that was that was uh, the Jacob Horn. Okay. Yeah, meaning because we we'd already signed those other guys, and we were kind of playing the numbers. We weren't going to bring in another kid that really at the receiver spot, because um, we had Barbie, we had Drew Jackson. We felt like that was good. We have a lot of young receivers in that room. Uh, you, you only you lost Hutch White and Mason Hayes, so you replaced them with those two, and then Jacob Horn comes along, who's committed at an SEC school for a year. Again, I can't say no to that one, so we kind of move numbers around uh, to make sure that works. So uh, it's a talented kid with a lot of SEC offers. Yeah, and and that's the whole deal. Like you know, especially like offensive linemen. I've had two freshman offense linemen ever play for me, and and they were top ten draft picks. It was Luke Jokel and Jake Matthews. You know that those are rare. You know, majority you need a year of development and like an acclimatization period of just understanding the speed, 
uh, the size, the strength, and all that. And and O line is very tough to coach because you got to get all five moving together. So it just gives them a year of development. But a lot of these these young guys are going to have to play though, like especially at the linebacker spot when you lose a lot of linebackers like that. You're going to have to put them in roles, and you got to look at the special team side of things where you need those bigger kind of mid range body types too to be able to help in special teams. So. That's why we, we set down and these preferred walk-ons that we've been talking about that are going to come here are going to have to play too because they bring body types. Because when you lose 22 guys like that, it, you got to you got to amp it up and you got to have these guys come in and play right now. Yeah, and we show them the tape, and we show them. Well, we really show them the depth chart, and they show they see like when you go into a lot of places that have established their numbers, you know, there's a lot to work with. But like, you, we can just throw the board up and we're not lying to them or anything. We're just like, look at the board, these are the guys. And if you do the math, you know, you if you come in and, and do what you believe is capable of what they can do, then, you know, it'd probably work itself out. Oh, not even close. I kid. It uh, just like what I was saying, and I, that's what I was thinking. The support staff and just compliance and, and the academic side of things, and the, and who's handling the money and the scholarships and the housing. You know, like there's so many moving parts, like meningitis shots. Like who, like I don't know nothing about that. Like no, it's just they were the ones that ended up putting it all together. That you you don't understand how many moving parts they are. And when you have a guy like Tory Spears who just finished up in like Iowa State and you know Jamil Jeter and these guys and they got to flip it around turn in you got to have so many different parts where last year was a struggle because like you know I eventually got it down but like I don't think I could have got him in at mid-year you know it ended up being like a May signing so they really helped with you know putting it and putting it in place and getting it accomplished and getting them here at mid-year so we can at least put together a pretty good spring. Yeah, I think I think we're what we're doing right now is is we're getting it better every day. You see, like I always talk about that, but you know, last year at this point, you know, we were trying to see what type of equipment we had and what type of personnel we had and just what gear do the kids get or like where do they do the laundry at? There's just so many different parts of where it's at um, where we've got everything in place where everything's running smooth. Now you can keep focusing on recruiting and keep trying to develop your kids and all your focus goes into that instead of all the other moving parts. And which makes it where you can keep making those, you can build off of the things that you've already established and keep making it better. And that's why I see at this place, we're, we're not where we wanna be, but we're getting closer and closer and closer and it's about to take off in my mind. And uh, that's why I say there's a lot of optimism, you know, that we're setting an expectation, you know, last year, was not acceptable, you know, and that's what we're trying to get out of these kids. Like, you know, we've got to get over this losing culture that has been here for a long time. We got to get it back to when it was a winning culture and, and those days. And you talk to like the guys that were here in the 80s, you know, that this university means a lot to them for all the success they had and the memories that they shared. And then a lot comes down to winning. You know, you look at the 2005 team, you know, they're very, uh, passionate about this place because of winning and where they're at and the times that they had when they're here and that's what we got to get it back to and and um, I, I think we're we're bringing in an identity and that these kids are gonna uh, kind of make a name for themselves and I, I think there's a lot of optimism in this program and the type of quality player that you guys are reading about that we're bringing in I think we can just keep stacking the days like I talk about um, we can keep building this program the way we want it to be Oh yeah, I think uh, I think everybody on my staff knows I'm probably one of the better ones to work for in college football in terms of of I'm not a guy that's going to guard the desk the entire time. 
You know, I, I trust these coaches. I trust the support staff. There's a lot of work in it in general. You know, we work a lot of hours, you know, but if but we're all on the same page. We all work together. We all don't have egos. We can pick up the slack for if someone has to go see a family member or go to a baseball game or, or go to a gymnastics uh, uh, practice. And, you know, like we want that to happen, birthday parties, all that. We bring the kids up here. The, the wives are very, very interconnected, too, and try to help out. So we, we try to help each other out through the whole thing, you know, and I try to give off as much time as we possibly can but a lot has to do is that we all have to be on the same page we all have to be efficient in what we do and and I've got a staff that's comfortable with working each other where with with each other where we can we can do that you know um but like kind of what the, the time that I give off for the staff is very similar to a lot of the people I've worked for you know so it, it's really about I think I'm a big believer if there's a good quality of life you're going to get a very a very good product out there and you can keep coaches Uh, I don't know. I just like other places in our conference. You know, I I kind of looked at everything of where we were at last year. I thought we were probably the smallest team in the Sun Belt. When like you know you walk out and you just see the body types that they have, and our whole thing is you know if if we want to be competitive in this league, we need to increase our body types. You know, and and get a quality player that can match because. You know, I, I can't fault some of our kids. Like, if you have an undersized D tackle and he's going up against two hundred, two, three hundred and forty pound guys, you know, it's just it's difficult. You know, it's that's science in a way. You know, it's just not it's not going to work out. But um, you know, it, it, it's all about just making sure that we believe where we were at last year and increasing it, and know that we can compete in this league. And I don't know what these other teams are bringing in right now, but I, I, I think it's got to be comparable to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like big receivers. I've always been that way. I think the catch radius, I don't think the quarterback has to be as accurate with it. Um, I think they're more durable at times. You know, that it, it's just if you look at my receivers at West Virginia, they're all really six foot three and above and big body types that, you know, that are good targets. It's great in the red zone. They're great for possession, efficiency. You know, if you can catch and take a hit and get five yards, the ball's moving forward. So, um, really like those guys. To come to Texas State, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think it's. First off, you got to find players that fit what you're trying to build, and like what I what what I want is guys that know how to win. So I try to bring guys that have been competitive, been a part of winning programs, just have, have done a lot of that uh, in their lives. They just are very competitive because I think we need that here at this school. It just especially with position battles, all that, I want guys to come in and compete and earn it. And that's where you start with, you look at those players, and then you start to sell them on everything about Texas State. I know there's a lot of good schools in this state, um, but I, it's kind of like what I said a long time ago, like, why not us? Like, yeah, I look around, I believe in this job. Uh, there's other places I could have gone to, but there's a reason why I'm here, because I believe in this place, and I know that we can recruit a quality player here. Uh, and there's a lot to pick from in this state, you know? and. I think we've won a lot. I've, we've won some recruiting battles with a lot of schools in this state, you know. And I think there's a lot to sell. And I think once you start having some of these guys come in and start having success and start winning, then you're going to keep getting more and more and more of them. You know, we're trying to get a Texas kid in here, but at the end of the day, we have to figure out what's best for us and if we can get a quality player in here that's going to be comparable to win the Sun Belt. That's kind of how you got to look at it.